If you ever wondered how hard can it be to put some pedals in a car, well, we're about to find out. Sitrep, our fancy 90 degree pedal box may be rather unconventional, but well, we got the idea from an old Dodge van, turns out Ferrari used something like it in the 308. Going forward then, we'll probably just refer to that one. <clears throat> anyway, it's been lightened and modified to fit in here, so we really just need the pedals themselves. Superfluous to say or not, the factory ones aren't going back in, and neither will the one that came with our pedal box. We'll find some other use for those and begin with a clean slate, which entails two things, calculating the correct ratios and determining the best layout. Fortunately, the latter can be made simple by referencing a car that already has a good layout. And in my WRX, we're looking at four and a quarter inches between each pedal, and the throttle should sit slightly lower than the brake and clutch. Good, that should get us started. In order to fit that spacing in here though, we need to free up some room for our heavy foot, as being a left-hand drive model, the floor tapers in at the front and forces our feet off to the left, while our torso points slightly to the right. Yeah, thanks Leyland. It's not exactly nice for the old spine then, and if we can correct this, it's important to do so now, as the throttle will set up the position for the other two pedals, and consequently, we need to start with it. A ruler helps to show where this lip is pointing, and happily there's plenty of clearance to the transmission and exhaust to reclaim, so in following with the rest of the floor, let's fire up the grinder. So now if you look at sort of the area up in here, we could almost just go straight out from that without really getting in the way of anything, and then up here, kick it back in. So all that extra space where this came straight up and then over more or less, we can now have it come over and then angle from there down to there, just as long as we keep some clearance to the transmission. So I think this has opened up a lot of foot room. Seems to have. It would be nice to have at least a temporary transmission tunnel though, as that would give us a hard right boundary for the throttle and let us optimize space. So a piece of sheet metal is being whipped out to get chopped, tidied, and bent till it fits. You'll notice that we've attached this panel behind the tubing up there, and that's because the permanent tunnel will also follow this approach, giving us a smoother underside ready for heat shielding, and leaving a bit more room in the cabin for insulation and carpet. Things are clearly not sitting perfectly here as it does get too close to the gearbox in places, but it will serve the purpose for now, and thankfully, the additional foot room is very noticeable. From the edge of the old floor, we've now got this much more space. Score! Plus, from the looks of it, we've even got room for a dead pedal. So that's splendid, and I think it's time to build the throttle.
right on. That's a great start to the loud pedal then. But we'll hold off connecting it to the engine for now, as the rest of the pedals are today's primary targets. <laughs> That is, they were, until I received a crate. Yes, you knew it had to happen eventually. I bought a lathe, or Manilatha, as Tony puts it. To a seasoned machinist, these import units are glorified toys that are nothing to brag about, and that's fine. I understand the limits and that they're usually hit or miss, but the important thing for you to know is that ours is a miss. That's not great. Going by instinct here, I'd say it obviously took a fall, but guessing it was the impact at the end that caused this. Unfortunately, the mangled electronics box delivered a substantial blow to the lead screw, messing that up pretty badly, and although the rest doesn't look too terrible, who really knows, right? At this point then, my default reaction was to send the whole thing back. But after agreeing on a partial refund and through some editing trickery, it's fixed now, and I'm into it for about half the list price. How fanatic builds is that? So, we'll have a video covering the repairs and improvements in due course, but for now, I just want to extend a huge thanks to our patrons and donators for making this possible. And look, it's even got a shelf, which doubles down as a storage spot for a few other tools, and believe it or not, the materials for it have been sitting in the garage since before the car. Winning! With a general cleanup to round out this interruption, then, we've got a great upgrade to our less than sizable workspace. Too bad it wasn't like this before now, but as they say, better lathe than ever. Begs the question though, what do you think our first turning project will be? Turning back to the car then, with the throttle installed, we can press on with either of the other two pedals. But as the brake system is the most complete already, let's go with that. We have a fulcrum, we have a desired height for the pedal, so we just need to make the lever that will connect everything through this bell crank to the master cylinder. That way when the pedal's pressed, the car stops. Easy. <coughs> yeah. Lies. Future Me is here to tell you this was not easy. In fact, it was quite possibly the most complicated piece of engineering we've had in this project. Which is saying something. And if you ever wondered why these videos aren't more regular, well, here's your answer. Ultimately, we had to find our pedal ratio. Which is a simple enough concept in itself, it's just a lever. But it turns out finding the correct ratio involves handling quite a few other numbers. Mm -hmm. Fair to say then, this was a huge learning curve for me, but with the help of this basic formula, a small chart, and most notably this powerful calculator tool, we've ended up with a 5 to 1 ratio, and that's great to have behind us. There was so much to cover in this decision though, that rather than explain it all here, we're going to break it off for its own video. So stay tuned for that then, and for now, just know that at this ratio, our booster is probably excessive. If only someone had told us. <clears throat> Anyways, we'll be able to achieve threshold braking with just 50 pounds of foot effort, which sounds touchy, but I honestly think it'll be okay, as critically we'll still have enough advantage to stop the car if the booster fails. And in my way of thinking, once we can actually drive the beast, we'll quickly discover what needs to happen. Strategically then, starting with a large booster means we can always swap it for a smaller one, but the opposite wouldn't have been possible due to space.
Cool, that's coming along nicely, and now we just need to sort out the clutch. Again, I'll reserve the actual math for another time, but the short version is the clutch master's cylinder needs to be actuated 7 eighths of an inch to fully release our clutch. And by matching the pedal length to that of the brake, we can determine the ratio with some simple CAD drawings. In the end, we should expect a very reasonable 35 pounds of effort and only 5 inches of travel to operate our clutch. So let's make it happen. After all that effort, it's amazing to see this working out so nicely. I mean, look at that! Wild! And yes, things are tight, but nothing binds, so we'll just call it a precision fit. You may have noticed, though, that both the brake and clutch levers are the same length, which looks awesome, but technically, they should be different. So what gives there? Well, you're never going to believe this, but it turns out the pedal box manufacturer sneakily gave the bell crank its own ratio which is actually reducing our overall effort. Unbelievable! So, what we've had to do is use the same, more aggressive ratio of our clutch pedal, which when multiplied by this bell crank, gets us back to exactly where we need it to be. Seriously, we're just as surprised as you. Take that then, pedal box manufacturer people. Your sneaky mind tricks didn't work on us. Next up then, let's build a bracket to mount the clutch master cylinder.
still needs final welding, obviously, but so does a whole heap of other stuff, so don't worry. We next need to finalize the mounting system for all this awesomeness, plus double shear the bell crank. As all the multiplied brake forces are going through it, and it would be daft of us to have beefed up everywhere else, but ignore this. This is a test. This is the, uh, there's a firewall in the way. Sorry. And the only way to get this is in, is through here. Now, the steering column is gonna have to come out. That's, that's just where we are. So, you'll notice I've had to remove a few bits. <laughs> As it turns out, I think the pedals are gonna have to be the very first thing that goes in. And the dash bar itself may have to come out to let the pedal assembly slide up into place, but that's what I'm trying to figure out right now, because I'd like to know it now, and not be surprised by it later on. Here we go. That's done it. Interestingly, I think I have... I think I've got it in here within the confines of the area. You Do you have the back bracket that goes on to there? No, it's on the firewall. Okay. And not all of this is in frame at that point. Okay, hey, you know what? That added some stability. That at least lets me release. I know I'm cheating, I'm reaching my arm around the outside. But, but, but we will have an access hole there, so I mean, somebody could reach in from that side. Yes, it's possible. <laughs> you can install everything from inside the car with an imaginary firewall boxing in over top of this without sticking it outside of the car. It can work. Um, is it fun? No. Is it something we'd be doing every week? No. I think I could live with that. But at yeah. least it's doable, which is great. And this is bolted in, so we have clutch, brake, everything here together, bolted in. Basically, it's just minus final welding and Plumbing. hydraulic lines. Yeah. Yeah. So at this stage, uh, we can come back and do the final welding whenever we want. But I think we're going to switch our attention back to the gas pedal and finish it off so we have every single driver control dialed. So that'd be kind of cool. Let's uh, see if we can make that work. How hard can it be, right? Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to the faithful patrons, donators, and subscribers who tangibly support our shenanigans. If you're interested in helping out as well, there are links below. But till next time, keep building, and we'll catch you later. That has worked out perfectly though, sir, and there is no flex in here at all now with that piece being welded in at the bottom. <laughs>